this edition of Steve Tech Videos, I want to cover how a wastegate actually works. I have a lot of people that call and they're a little bit confused about how an actual wastegate works. So this is the internal workings of a wastegate. All right, so this is typically on and it's all put together here. So we take the top of the diaphragm or the top of the cap off and I'll explain some things to you here. So first, we'll just take the spring out. Uh, the, the spring obviously is there. You, so let's say this is a 10 pound spring, which I think this is a 10 pound spring. This happens to be a turbo smart wastegate. We use these all the time. They're just a higher, higher quality wastegate. The spring is keeping a valve closed. So this valve right here, now it's missing the part that's on the tube, but the, this valve right here, you can see, goes in and out, okay? So it builds a certain amount of exhaust pressure up in the system and we're controlling that pressure and what it bypasses. So as soon as it reaches X amount of pressure dictated by the spring and something else very important, opens the, pre opens the gate, opens this valve, the exhaust gas goes past the valve and out your exhaust pipe right here, out your wastegate pipe. Now you can tee this wastegate pipe into your main exhaust or let most all drag race stuff is um, actually a separate pipe that doesn't go into the exhaust system. But you can do it either way and uh, preferably, actually preferably I'd, I'd like to have them all uh, exit mounted uh, on their own pipe. But you can see what happens there, it's all sealed up tight, it sees X amount of pressure and it starts bypassing which allows the turbocharger to slow down. Now this is key because I'll, I'll, if I have time here, maybe we'll do this in this episode or I'll do it in the next episode of how this works when you try doing this with a Pro Charger. In fact, I'll do it in this one. But anyways, so that opens up. It allows the exhaust gas out through here instead of forcing everything through the exhaust turbine wheel and therein slowing down the turbocharger. So one of the really important things that must happen here, now I have the spring out of it. What needs to happen that a lot of people forget or don't look at is that this must be boost referenced. This port on the bottom of the diaphragm, there's two of them. One would be plugged, one would go to your turbo or your manifold. Has to be hooked up. What happens is without that being referenced, I actually went and checked out and verified what this spring actually was. This is a 10 pound, or I'm sorry, seven pound spring. This is a seven pound spring, but you know what? When you put this all together, that spring actually makes about 35 pounds of pressure, according to my gauge over here. So when you don't have any reference to this, this thing ends up making about 35 pounds of boost. You forget to hook up that line, this thing goes right to 35 pounds of boost. I know they do, I've verified this because when this line gets broken or taken off in the car, they just go ping right up the wide open throttle boost. I mean, they just go crazy. In fact, I've broken blocks and LS's when I've had one time when I had a uh, this line come off. So this line references this spring, which is actually around 35 pounds and turns it into a seven pound spring, okay? So that is how this whole system works. Now. That references it, makes this thing into a seven pound spring. So this would just open up and basically make seven PSI a boost. So it would, in, in order to keep the exhaust wheel turning slower uh, and not over speed, i.e. make more boost or move more air, it'll start opening up and go to that wastegate spring. Now, there's a couple different ways of controlling wastegate pressure and how much boost that we're making in an engine. Uh, most all drag race guys that I know of, myself included, always use top of the gate uh, boost control. So we have pressure, we'll just pretend the spring's in there. We then put pressure to the top side of the diaphragm. This top side of the diaphragm adds spring pressure. See the valve go up down. That spring is compressing. We put this on there, we put boost pressure there, or I'm sorry, put any kind of pressure there, and it adds to our spring. So theoretically, if we are have a seven pound spring, and I put 
seven pounds of pressure on top of the diaphragm up here and the bottom is already referenced to the turbo so whatever the turbo makes it's actually reading right it right there and referencing uh, seven pound spring seven pounds of gate pressure on top of the diaphragm adds pressure to the top of here forcing it down would theoretically make 14 pounds now in general that's exactly what happens uh, as you'll go along and you'll see some of our other videos uh, you start getting into diminishing returns where uh, more boost and more back pressure sometimes takes more dome pressure than than a perfect one-to-one -one ratio where seven pounds of spring and seven pounds of pressure equals 14 pounds of boost sometimes in the bigger cars I mean we'll have uh, 70 pounds 80 pounds of gate pressure to make 50 pounds of boost or 60 pounds of boost that's perfectly normal that is okay so those are the major areas of how these things work so this is gate pressure on top then the other way that uh, some of the other guys do it uh, mainly like imports or a lot of street cars type stuff is they don't do anything with the top they just interrupt the signal the boost reference signal to here so you're never going to make less than what your spring rate is okay you're never making less than this that would be the minimum and if you block this remember I said that if you uh, don't have it hooked up at all it just goes right to max boost well if you're interrupting the signal and kind of pulsating it like a nitrous solenoid it'll also do the same thing it will raise your pressure up raise your turbine speed of your turbo and make the turbo spin faster and make more boost so there's different control methods of how to do this but that is the nuts and bolts of how a wastegate works it's bypassing bypassing uh uh, exhaust gas which allows the turbo to slow down or speed up based on how we control the gate either by the top of the gate or the bottom of the gate but always remember please make sure that this bottom of the gate is always boost reference directly to your turbo is the best spot secondary place would be in your intake manifold now the other thing that people love to try to do with a wastegate is everybody or not everybody a lot of people want to uh, use a wastegate to kind of try to control boost and a supercharger uh, problem being is it does not work uh, you're not doing the exact same thing when you open this up and you open this valve it lets exhaust gas out and slows the turbo down it can no longer spin as fast when you do this on the compressor side of a supercharger system you're asking the supercharger to move more air you're not asking the, the, the supercharger to slow down. You're asking it to move more air. And the perfect illustration that I give people is think about uh, your shop vac. When you put your hand over the hose of shop vac, the motor speeds up. It goes and just starts speeding up. You take your hose up, your hand off of it, it slows down. It starts working. Well, guess what? When you dump a bunch of air out of your supercharger system on the compressor side all of a sudden that thing goes back crap crazy and takes a extreme amount of parasitic drive loss it drives the horsepower up just like the opposite effect of your shop vac put your hand over the shop vac the engine speeds up because it's not moving any air as soon as you take your hand off of it and all of a sudden it's moving air again it loads the motor well guess what when you move maximum amount of air through a pro charger vortex whatever it is by dumping it a valve open on it trying to control boost you 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 are going to lower boost just a little bit but you are going to significantly drive that parasitic drive loss up so it is going to really load the blower and it has a tendency to break blower break uh, blower belts hard on the pucks on gear drive it's just not a good system to do that with does it work somewhat yes i mean you will slow it down i'll guarantee you you'll slow it down by opening a valve like this but that is not what you're it is not the same thing as a turbo you're not controlling boost you're making a problem with a pro charger or a vortex by opening up uh, a boost leak a controlled boost leak uh, like a blow off valve or something like that uh, you are making a controlled boost leak that drives up the parasitic drive losses significantly. You will damage parts. It is not the way to do it. The only way you're controlling boost in a centrifugal is by blower speed, period. Change the pulleys.
that's all there is to it uh, if you did this on an intake or on a turbo system and you put you opened up the uh, uh, if you put a wastegate or you opened up a blow-off valve under boost it does the same thing similar it does a similar thing to uh, the supercharger side uh, then you overspeed the supercharger I'm sorry the, the turbocharger the wheel just gets crazy fast so anyways uh, that's the proper wastegate operation why you can't use a wastegate in a supercharger area uh, why we don't dump boost off on the com anything on the compressor side supercharger or turbocharger it's never a good idea you control boost with a wastegate on turbos on the exhaust side you control uh, boost with a centrifugal charger with lower speed change the belt change the gear set wherever it is you're gonna have to change how fast it spins so anyways we'll cover some more stuff and we'll also cover uh, in future uh, editions of Steve Tech we'll be covering how the boost controllers actually work function and in, uh, in EFI systems and Holly fuel tech uh, they all basically do everything the same. I'll show you how to do that and multiple other things. I'm Steve Morris, Steve Tech. Have a great day.